Hello, Yorick here. This is a uh, follow-up video. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a failed Ubuntu boot drive if you have them in a ZFS mirror. I'll link the video where I explain how to set that up in the first place. This will work with an unencrypted ZFS boot mirror, it'll work with an encrypted ZFS boot mirror, um, and slightly adapted version of this will also work with a RAID Z boot drive. Okay, let's get going. So what I have here is my first drive failed and in, I see that my boot pool is degraded and this drive here is unavailable and my root pool is degraded, this drive is unavailable. I'll take a quick look at the swap and you'll see it's clean degraded with a drive removed. So with that, replacing a failed drive, first I need to know what the ID of my new drive is. So def disk by ID, and I can see here I have my SDA, that's the new drive, that's the one I failed, and that's its ID. Um, so I'm gonna do new disk. This is because just because to make my life easy, so I don't have to type this all the time. And then this ID here for the new drive. And what that is exactly in your system will vary, right? Depending on which drive failed and you are replacing. Now I need a partition table on this. By the way, I wiped it on this drive first, so hopefully this time around when I showcase this. I'm not running into snags because I've been doing testing on the drive ahead of time. You can check whether the drive has any partitions on it or any IDs on it with a wipefs and this one is clean. So I'm going to take the partition table of the existing drive and copy it over to the new drive. So the existing drive is this one right here sdb in my case and I'm copy that copy that over to new disk with a dash r and then when I've done that I need to give this new group IDs or unique IDs sorry um, so that I don't have any issues with the partitions on the drive side note here if I am replacing drives because I want to increase capacity, all I would do now after this play, after this um, step is I would delete partition 4, recreate it with maximum size, tell the kernel to use the new partition table, and then tell ZFS to use expanded space automatically. And then just follow the instructions for a failed drive. And that I, I haven't tested that because I don't have larger drives, but I have no reason to believe it wouldn't work. Okay, so I've got the partition table on my new drive, and now I'm going to um, repair my boot pool by replacing the failed partition with the new one. So this one here in mirror zero, this one is unavailable, and you can see that it was dev disk by part UUID and so on. That's on the original drive. So now I need the partition UID on my new drive. That's this one, E49F and so on. And I'm just gonna issue a replace command. sudo cpool replace and then the boot pool, the existing UID, this one right here, And the um, UID of the partition on the new drive. So it starts with E4 tab. There we go. That's looking good. And that's my replace done. And I'm going to do a quick status just to confirm that worked. And you can see here it's replacing this right now and I'm waiting for the resilver to complete. If I run this again, it is done and this is online and it's all looking good. Now I will repeat this for the root pool. So zpool status rpool and 
and again there's my UID of the unavailable drive. Need the partition for UID in this case. 8C and so on and then do another replace this time on the R pool not the B pool and the uh, UID that is missing that's unavailable off the failed drive and then the partition UID 8C tab off the new one and when that comes back. I'm going to do another status. This is a little larger, so it will actually take a minute to resilver, and that's fine. I can keep going while it's doing that. So you see here, waiting for resilver to complete, the status degraded, and I have here replacing zero. So this is currently copying all the data onto the new drive. While that's going, I'm going to repair swap, which is on dev md0. You can see this is what I want to see that the um, original partition I had here is removed and active is dev stb2. So I'm just going to add partition 2 on the new drive to it. And check that again. And now what I expect to see is that it's either rebuilding or already in active sync. And I see it's spare rebuilding. So that's great, that, that worked. Last, I need to repair EFI. So first I need to create an EFI on partition one on the new disk, a file system. There we go, that's done. Then I'm gonna reconfigure grub to tell it to copy itself to that drive. And I will accept the um, default, so just hit OK hit enter again, hit enter, and this is where it matters. It's not installed on dev SDA, which is my new drive for the failed drive, so just space to select that, tab to come over, enter to OK. And that's gonna get going, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna do this for AMD64 signed. As in the previous video, I actually haven't figured out whether this is strictly speaking necessary, and it can't hurt me. And reconfigure EFI AMD64 signed. I'm gonna run another zpool status just to see where that sits right now. It's still replacing 50% on these on the fastest drives. And there's my uh, swap, that's looking good, active sync. And here I am when resilvering, which is what a ZFS rebuild is called, is done. You can see our pool mirror zero is now both our online status online on both pools. If this takes a minute in your environment and you need to reboot in the middle of it, you can safely do so. Um, ZFS will not corrupt any data and it'll continue the resilvering after it's done. Thank you for watching and hopefully this was useful.